So we should be up and recording. Had a couple of things we were, I thought about talking, uh, discussing today with you. And I, so I'm going to just kind of show you some things. And I've talked about RPR in the past. If you haven't been using RPR, it is free for those of you who are members of the National Association of Realtors. And you can access RPR a number of different ways. You can go to NARRPR, NARRPR, as you can see in the, uh, the, the little uh, address bar up here. A lot of times, some of the boards, and for I, I know we've got several folks that are online with us here with that are members of the St. Louis board, you can actually access this through your, your local board. And when you log in, and I'll just log in through Maris. When I log in through Maris, there's the opportunity to either go into the MLS, the multi-list, or I can actually go into, well, I see they've changed something here. Uh, you could go into, they used to have RPR right there on the front dashboard, and they've changed that now. So evidently we have a dashboard, but I can go into RPR right here. Well, that's kind of interesting that Merit, now I can go into any of these items. So I can select RPR and go right into RPR from, from Maris. So however you want to access it, if you want to directly go to NARRPR.com, you can do that, or you can go to uh, your local MLS and hopefully maybe just log in through that portal as well. One of the things I wanted to show you today is the ability to take information or reports. And I know that there, there are uh, Bob, one of the guys that joins our calls quite a bit. He's a top agent in another part of the country. He sent me, he has sent me some videos before on how he communicates and stays in touch with his clients and customers about really what's going on in the marketplace. And, and I have some folks right now that I, I'm not able, I don't have a lot going on on their properties and yet I don't want them to be discouraged or get upset with me. And I want to try to provide them with information about what's going on. So I wanted to kind of talk today about some solutions or, or ideas of things that we could do to kind of let people know what's happening. And RPR really provides some interesting reports in that respect. So I'm going to use um, a piece of property and kind of attempt to get in and, and show you something that we can do and then maybe some ways we can use technology to communicate. So I have a piece of property that I have listed right now. It's in the 6364 zero zip code, Farmington, Missouri. And I'm going to actually in RPR do a little bit more of an advanced search. And I want to do a value range between 200 to 275 because their property is in this price range. Actually, I should probably go to 250 because their house is listed for 2645. So I just want to kind of show them what's happening when we get up in this 250 to 275 price range. Actually, I'll just push it on up to 300. So now uh, I access that by going into this advanced tab, which is right here. And I'm doing 250 to 300,000. We're doing Farmington, Missouri, but I want to come over here to market activity because I'm actually wanting to see, uh, well, we'll do, we'll do properties that are for sale right here. 250 to 300. And you can access that from the advanced tab. Now I want to show, uh, I want to show all of these properties, so I'm going to leave that alone. 
and I'm going to just do a search here. We're going to look at a couple of different reports and see what we might want, how we may want to present this. So again, I'm just searching Farmington. Now there's 29 properties that are for sale. I want to scroll on down here to um, down here to the uh, to the list, and I can see what's happening. And these are all marked for sale. I'm just looking. I'm wanting to see. There's my property actually right there, 269. And so here's a pending right here at 285. Here's another pit. Well, that's we have double. We have to. Some of us belong to the St. Louis and the local MLS, so it kind of skews our statistics. Now here's one for 279 at Quell Run. That's an interesting. Uh, it's contingent with a kickout clause. Again, those are the same properties. And we'll go on over here to the next phase and we've got another sale pending on Williams Road that has 36 acres and I'm just looking to see what kind of pendings we have out there so now what I'm going to do in this scenario is I'm going to um, before I actually get this I'll go ahead and get the report here so I select get the report and in this case, I'm going to do a, um, I'm going to leave this market activity report and I want to do this for the past three months. And I do not want condos, co-ops, lots and lands or mobile homes, but I will take single family farm and ranch and I'm going to take all of these features here and I'm going to get the report. Now I can go on and work an RPR while that's getting the report. So I'm going to close this X. I see we have a question here. And Ruth is asking if I use the RPR app and the answer is yes, I have Ruth. It's a wonderful app. I, I find it very helpful and it's uh, very good to use. And what I like about the app is that anything I'm creating or doing online with the RPR program, for example, this report that I just generated, I could actually pull that up on my phone or email it from the app on my phone. So that's one of the things I really like about the app. I actually, I'm going to go ahead and get a, we're going to get a market report. I want to see what this turns out now. It's just being generated here and it, it will let me know in a minute. While that's cooking in the oven, we're going to jump out and we're going to go out to a, a company that I use a lot of their products called techsmith.com. T-E-C-H techsmith.com. They have several things several products that you can um, you can use at techsmith.com I have no idea what happened there I'll try try reloading that and if we go to I, I just here we go so they're having a throwback Thursday sale. That's 20% off. They have some free products. They have a free product called Jing. Many of you have seen me talk about Jing before, and it's free. If you want to download it, it you can do some really cool things with it. They also have a product called Snagit. And I really like Snagit for a, a number of reasons. We can capture images. We can record video. We can do some really cool things with Snagit, and that's what I'm going to show you is basically how I'm using Snagit. It's $50 for the product. You can try it for free for 15 days. When they have upgrades, you can see it's half the price. Half price. But for $50, you can really do some cool things with it. 
And and the the difference between Snagit and Jing is Jing is limited on what you can really do with the program. Snagit kind of opens up a whole new uh, ability to do longer videos, to add some annotations and so forth. So I wanted to show you Snagit because we're going to be using that. And I'm going to download this report. And the goal of this, what I'm wanting to do with Snagit and this report is really be able to go through and explain some information to my client. Now, I am going to select there's a shortcut. You can zoom in and out, but if you'll notice right here, I'm using a MacBook and that's called the command plus key, the command plus key. If you're a Windows user, it's the same thing as using your control key. So if I do control plus on the Windows or command plus on on the on my MacBook it enlarges the screen now if I do command and a minus sign I can make this smaller again what we're doing is I went to view and it's just a shortcut so for a Windows user you would do the control key and the plus key to enlarge the text in control minus to make it smaller. And by the way, I use that all the time when I'm reading online because my eyesight doesn't seem to be what it used to be. <laughs> and sometimes I'll be uh, be in an area of a web page and I just hit control or command and the plus key and the and it makes it bigger and I can actually read the, the print a little bit easier. Now I'm making this a little smaller because I'm going to, I want to drag this through and I want to explain what's happening to my clients for my clients. So the first thing I would want to do is familiarize myself with the report naturally. And I'd want to go through, uh, these are the active listings and there's 20 new listings in that price range. And we could scroll on down. And again, I just want to get familiar with what's happening. And now I'm going to come down here. There have been 20 price changes in Farmington. And actually, this is in a whole different price range because of the market. But I love this format here. And so we're going to scroll on down. And here, remember, this is over the last three months. There have been 20 pending listings. And I'm going to scroll down. And then we've had uh, 20 that have expired. It's kind of the 20 is the number, isn't it? For the last three months. If it says there's 20 solds, I'm going to think there's something wrong with 20 solds. That's odd. I don't know how all of that came about, but that is very odd. So um, we'd have to look through and kind of take a look at, at that to make sure that it just is kind of bothering me now when I see that. Well, good. Five distressed listings. So um, we'll go back up here. That's just really strange, isn't it? That over the last three months and in that zip code that there would the number 20 would be so prevalent but we'll we'll use that now that i have snagit started and i've downloaded snagit which is right here we will actually then start snagit now here is snagit right here it puts it over on the side and what I'm going to do is hit the red record button. Now, there's lots of options I can do, but I just want to really record what's inside this little area right here. And Snagit actually allows me to take a picture of the page, which I could do here on the left, or I can do a video. 
Now I've preset my capture width and height, so that's already taken care of. So I'm just going to select capture video right here. And Snagit will probably, uh, it tells me the system audio is off right now. So I could turn the audio on and I'll turn my microphone on right there. So now I have the microphone and everything's ready to go. You can see my little green screen down below. It's giving me the, the microphone is working. And I'm going to hit the record button. And so now it's counting off and it's going to allow me to begin speaking. Now, what I want to do is just say, hi, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, this is John Mayfield. First of all, as always, I want to thank you for your business. You've been great customers, and I appreciate you uh, supporting me. And I just kind of wanted to give you a recap of what's happening in the last three months in the Farmington, Missouri 63640 zip code. And I've actually printed out a report that I'm providing to you in this email that you could download after you listen and watch this video. If you'd like to download the report, you can do that. There's a link in the email that I've sent you. But it's kind of interesting to see what's happened over the last three months. You can see that uh, right now the median estimated home value is $133,000. Uh, the list price is 125000 the median list price. And as you can see, most properties at that price, at those prices, are taking about 159 days to sell. Now, keep in mind, our property is listed at 269000 So that's probably going to, that's one reason that it may take us a little bit longer to find a buyer. But I wanted to go through and just show you some details about this particular report. Now, that's all I'm going to do here. You would go through the report, talk about it. You would want to try to keep it within a couple few minutes. Hit the stop button. And that's going to package that particular report into a video that you can share with your customer. So I've, we're just waiting for Snagit to kind of do its thing. It's processing the video. And right here, if I wanted to go in and do some editing, I could. But at this point, notice that I could email this if I wanted to. And I would caution you on doing that because it might be too big of a file to email. So what I would encourage you to do, there's several options here. You can notice you could put it right here into Dropbox. And that might be kind of an interesting thing you could do. If you wanted to tweet this out, you could put it on Twitter. If you wanted to do that, you could capture it to Facebook and put it in Google Drive or even Evernote. There's a choice there. So I'm just going to hit Dropbox and we'll put this in Dropbox. And I'm going to. Um, so Snagit's going to, first of all, ask me to, to check this out with Dropbox. So I'm going to put John M. I can't remember my password because I always just log in from my, I hope that was it. So I'm going to allow this to connect to Dropbox. So here's what we're going to do. This is going to be really cool in just a second. We're going to have the link to this video in Dropbox that, that they could look at. Now, I might probably put this video on YouTube and make it what's called... Um, it's not private, but it's not public. I believe it's called... Uh, unpu unpublished or I'll, we'll take a look here and we'll do that. So I don't know what I need to do if this is. So maybe it's put this in Dropbox. I'm going to browse and I'm going to, we'll just put it in the active listings for right now. So I'm going to select that 
and I'll upload it. So it's going to Dropbox. Here's what I would probably do with the video, and it may take it a minute till it moves that over to Dropbox. I would actually put it into YouTube, and when you go to YouTube, there is the opportunity. We'll just go out and take a look at that real quick. If you upload a video to YouTube, you actually have the ability right here to make it unlisted. That's what you want. And so what I would do, so that video has been put in Dropbox. The reason I wouldn't probably put it in Dropbox is because I don't know what it's going to do. I'd rather I'd rather the consumer just select a link and watch it rather than download the file. So if you selected YouTube, which I just did, Snagit's going to probably ask me to log into my YouTube account. It may have already had that for some reason. And it looks like it's posting it to YouTube. So we've done our video. Now we've got the report here. Remember that we took. And what we want to do with this is we want to save this to our computer. So right here, I'm just going to select the download. And here's the report in my download file right here. And I will select File, Save As, and I'm going to save this in my Dropbox, but I'm going to make a new folder and call it 1111, okay? And I'll save it in there. Now let's go back here to Snagit, and it said that the... Uh, it, the snag it was available in my YouTube. Here's notifications. So here it is on YouTube. It's already posted. What I would do is go into this property. So I'm going to I want to, um, the one thing I hate about YouTube is the fact that they are always changing things around in here. So what, what you need to first of all do is go to your channel, my channel. We'll hope it put this in my, I've got a couple of YouTube and now I'm going to go to videos. And I was afraid of that. So I need to sign out. It put it in a different video channel. I must have uploaded something to, to YouTube. So let's go into the Business Tech Guy YouTube account. And now I'll go to my channel right up here on the left videos and here it is right here so when I go into to this video from here because I'm logged into my account there's this option called video manager right here and you can select video manager and right here is where I can edit the video and at this point I can do things like um, right here, I only want this to be unlisted. And I want to change this name to Mr. and Mrs. Smith. And then I would type in, here's a report about the Farmington real estate market. And here's where I would save the changes. 
you know, I could put my customized thumbnail. We talked about that already. We've done that before. So we definitely would want to put a customized thumbnail with your brand and everything there. Save the changes. And then, and once these changes have been saved, we would then be able to go and take the video URL right here copy it and that would be what I would use for my email so I'm going to log into my email and you'll probably see tons of emails coming across but we'll select the new button there we go and I'm going to just send this to myself John M and I'm going to put um, updated report on uh, Farmington, Missouri. And then here you would just put dear Mr. and Mrs. Smith uh, and type your letter. You know, I wanted to send you a quick video report and I would um, add the link right there and then you could say you can uh, after you finish the letter you you can uh, download the report here and this is where you would go to um, Dropbox, remember we went to Dropbox and I created this 111 file folder. And right here, I would just right click my mouse and I would share the Dropbox link. Okay. And now I just have to come back here and paste the Dropbox link. And then say, thanks again for your business, John. Now, here's what I would do. I use a program called Text Expander, and I've talked about this before. It's probably one of the most time-saving tools that I have as a real estate professional. I would type this letter one time, and I would add it to Text Expander. And then all you have to do, for example, when someone connects with me on LinkedIn, all I have to type is LK2 and look what it puts in for me. <laughs> Three letters and it types that entire email. Well, all I'd have to do is, is, is uh, put that in text expander, the copy of the letter, and then just go in and insert the YouTube link and insert the Dropbox link. And all you're really doing there for Dropbox, you go to Dropbox, you find the folder where you, where you put the report, the PDF, you right click and you select share Dropbox link, whether you're on a Windows or a Mac. And when you, when you select that, it copies that link to access that PDF right here on the clipboard. So all I have to do is find in the, find in that email letter where I say you can download the report here is right click my mouse and paste. And same thing with YouTube, you just go out and get the video URL. If I go, you know, if I go back to my um, channel and go to videos, right here's the video. You can also get the link right there, the share link, and right click your mouse. So now we have the email and we just send that off, right? 
Now I'm going to hit send and receive, mainly getting, mainly you're looking at junk mail. Here's the email. And see how the links are in there? So when Mr. and Smith, Mr. and Mrs. Smith read this, they can select there and watch the video. It's going to take them right to your YouTube channel. And they'll be able to watch the video. They will also be able to select the link and download and pull up the report for that particular property. So they would, uh, and normally it automatically, my Dropbox is not working real well with Safari and I don't know what the problem is with that, but uh, when I go in through another web browser, it does fine. And that would pull up the Dropbox and, and it would pull it up just like that. That that file's not that big that you could probably attach that to your email. Now, some of you may say, gee, that seems like a long drawn out process. What are we doing that for? Or, you know, is that really worth it? And my concern or response is always that I think people want to hear from you. I sent some folks yesterday, I actually talked to two of my clients yesterday, and they were very appreciative that I stayed in touch with them. I think sometimes, like the listing I have now, I need to kind of help at least tell the story that it's you know, sometimes sellers think that everybody house, everybody's house is selling but theirs. And I was talking to an agent the other day, and she said something that really kind of described what's going on, I think, in our marketplace is, you know, yes, we are busy, and yes, there are some properties selling, but there are still a lot of properties that are not getting much activity. And so I always just have felt like we really need to stay in touch and communicate with people. And you can do that with Snagit. Now, if you don't want to use RPR, you can use your MLS report. Or you could, um, you know, one of the really cool things that I love about Bob, and I don't know if Bob's on the call or not, one of the really cool things I love about Bob's reports is that he's doing some video where you actually see him in the video. And by the way, you can do that with Snagit as well, I think. Uh, if I do the uh, Snagit, we'll try that here. I was thinking that there was the opportunity to do a camera with Snagit. I know you can do that in, in TechSmith. And... Oh, I hit the wrong, I hit the picture, which I wanted to show you that as well. The other really cool thing about Snagit is the ability to, I'll show you that real quick. The other cool thing, and I use this all the time with Snagit, see there's the capture an image or the video. So if you capture an image, sometimes I've actually used Snagit when I've taken a Google map and you can actually take an you can draw an arrow and uh, it's kind of like they do on TMZ where they're trying to point out who the movie star is. <laughs> you can add arrows and you can add stamps and you can, you know, do all kinds of things. So there's some really cool and you can adjust these as well. So if you want to make that bigger. But sometimes I've taken maps and I've used Snagit in that respect to be able to, to draw images in that case. But I wanted to go back and just see very quickly on a video. And this time I'm going to hit the video camera. If there was an option to check for, and I don't see it, so it's just audio only. But I wanted to show you with Camtasia, with Camtasia, you can do that. It's much more. But I wanted to show you one more thing that I've been using, and I've, I'm getting a lot of really good feedback from this product, 
and it's called uh, iJot. It's one T. Similar to Bomb Bomb, and I think that's what uh, Bob uses is Bomb Bomb, and iJot they have for the for the iPhone as well. And I'm going to actually take advantage of that. But with iJot, I can create a video and send an email message through this. So the other day I had a friend of mine and we'll just search. She might even be on the call. I uh, sent Mary a, an email and um, I don't know if this would be it or not. I was trying to, I sent Mary an, an email. It's probably right back here though. And it is because you can actually look at the videos that you sent. And so here's the video that I sent to Mary right here. And there it is. It's coming up. And I actually created this video, it composes it, puts it in an email, and you could do this same concept that we're talking about and just send the report for them to look at if you didn't want to go through any of the other format. But I don't know, maybe some of you think this was kind of a silly, crazy thing. I just think that it's a good way to stay in touch, communicate, and it just shows how you can use technology in a whole different way to communicate what's going on. You know, it might be something that you want to um, to use for expired listings. If you can uh, talk to them and you want to follow up with an email with a CMA or a for sale by owner, you could always use it in that respect too. If anybody has any questions, I'll be glad to take those. But, you know, I kind of used a combination of uh, Snagit, which is $50. But trust me, you're going to be able to use Snagit for a lot of other things. Because if you do, if you have a property listed and you want to you wanna snag a map that's online or some other thing, you can do that with right there with capturing an image. If you want to do the video portion you can hit the record button and you can start talking about what's happening in the marketplace, upload it to YouTube and have that as available as well to send out to people. So if you're not using RPR, I would definitely check out RPR. It's a great tool. Snag it is good. You'll use it a lot. The other thing that I use Snagit for, and some of you have some Facebook business pages, and I don't make any money off Snagit. I don't want you to think that's why I'm uh, talking about it. But if you go out here to, to one other quick thing, and we'll wrap up for today. You go out here to, let's just say, Farmington, Missouri, and this auto-populates. And I just want to search Farmington, Missouri. You can select more about this neighborhood right here and actually get a pretty cool little report about what's happening in the marketplace in your community. And now I can take Snagit and I can snag this little area right here. Take a picture of it and actually use this on my Facebook page. And I didn't realize that, but I could just tweet this out right here or, or use Facebook. And I can put um, latest statistics for Farmington, Missouri. Uh, need to buy or sell, call John today. 
and boom, I've posted that and it's now on Twitter. And notice I put Farmington, Missouri in there. And so literally, if anyone's following a feed for Farmington, Missouri on Twitter that I'm not even friends with, they will see that on the tweet. So, I mean, I think Snag, it's a really cool program. And you can you could take this and put that on your Facebook business page. You could tweet it. You can get information about the people. If you even want to know how many days of sunshine there are in your community, you can get that on the quality of life. So just kind of think about ways that you can stay in touch with your consumers and how you can use technology, whether it's through Snagit and audio with visuals showing them your computer screen or whether it's using iJot and telling them about the product and then using solutions like Dropbox, which is free, where you can put the information in a Dropbox file, share the link, and your client can actually download that and pull it up and use that. Well, as always, thank you for joining today. We had a good group. I did record it, and uh, I've been uh, trying to get back on Missouri time after being in France and I've had a couple of webinars I've done for the CRB this week so it's been it's been a crazy busy week and I've got several phone calls to make when I get off this webinar but if I can ever help you if you ever watch one of the webinars and you say you know I want to learn how to do that but I just need some extra help please feel free to call me there's never a charge I'll be glad to help you in any way the only thing I ask is just pitch my name to your board or your office or your area if they ever need a technology or or a marketing or motivational speaker just i'd appreciate the the recommendation from you to your state or local association well thanks for watching have a great day i'll get this posted and put it online and uh, look forward to talking to you in two weeks have a great day bye